These are the leftover Thanksgiving pies. And as I explained earlier, the difficulty with pies is that you have a crust that is basically like bread based, has lots of shortening in it. And then we have a filling which has a lot of sugar in it. And these will two items freeze dry differently. The sugars will want to expand and crystallize where depending on the, the fat content may not be totally dry but can freeze dry and so it's like trying to freeze dry two different things at the same time and rehydration is what's difficult because they will rehydrate at different rates with the different amounts of moisture so what I've come up with and what I've done in the past is I turned the pies more into like a cobbler and that will actually freeze dry rather well and can come back a lot easier than trying to re rehydrate this big piece of pie so basically we're, so we're going to take the pie put it in the tray and i'm not going to mix my trays this one will fill a tray this one's going to be filled in a half tray i'm just going to take this and I know this is almost like sacrilege, but I'm going to chop this up. Using hot water out of the faucet, I'm going to put oh, about a cup and a half, two cups of water on top of my pie. And I can just hear it now. You guys are probably just rolling your eyes like, what in the world am I doing? Well, what I am doing is I'm going, I'm trying to dissolve some of the sugars in the filling. Now you got to remember, this is freeze drying. So all the water I'm putting in now will be gone when we're done. So all this moisture will be gone and done with. So I don't want to turn this into a milkshake, but I want to stir this around in the hot water so that the sugars in the cherry and in the syrup go into the water because what we need to do we need to give the sugars extra room to expand and to crystallize something just like that and we're going to do the same thing with the apple pie So here are my pies. I'm going to pre-freeze them. I pre-freeze all my food and we're going to throw it into the freeze dryer. Now when it comes out it's not going to be a nice triangular piece of pie but it's going to be a really nice dessert. We're going to throw some whipped cream on it and we're going to enjoy it. And I think it's going to be better, with that, better than what you think it is. These are my two pies just out of the freeze dryer. This is the apple pie and it doesn't taste too bad. I mean, you could eat this dry and it'd be really good. And this is my cherry pie. I had more apple than cherry. I'm going to go ahead and box this up and uh, put this in my inventory. Now, if I wanted to rehydrate this, it wouldn't be that difficult just putting some water in here and bringing it back, throwing it in the microwave and warming it up. This is more like a cobbler right now, but if you don't like your pie this way, I got a really great way to bring back a pie. I have two of my favorite pies here and my absolute favorite is pecan. And then I have a really good fruit pie here, blueberry. Well, if you ever freeze dried a pie, you know that it just doesn't come out right. You usually, as you saw in the previous video, you usually have to get the pie and you kind of chop it up and it turns in more into like a, a crumble or a cobbler. Well, I think I found a way to take a freeze dried pie and reconstitute it pretty close to the original thing. So 
That's why I made these two pies. We're going to slice this up and we're going to freeze dry them and then we're going to go through my procedure and see how close we can get. Well, that one didn't come out too well. All right, so here we go. We have our pies. We have our pecan pie and we have our blueberry pie. We're going to throw them into the freezer and pre-freeze them and then put them into the freeze dryer. Now one of the issues with pie is, there's two issues. The crust has a lot of fat in it from the shortening and the fillings have a lot of sugar in those. And so there'll be some crystallization uh, when we pull these out, but it shouldn't be too bad to uh, worry about that. So anyway, here we go. These are my pies. I have my pecan pie here and my blueberry pie here. Now these pies were freeze dried about three weeks ago and I just stick, stuck them into a plastic bag until I wanted to give it some time to test. Now one of my concerns about pie is the crust. The crust has shortening in it, it's fat, it has quite a bit of fat actually. and I. What I want to do, I'm going to use our little friend, this meter here, and we're going to measure for any gases that may be associated with spoilage, and that's primarily methane and hydrogen sulfide. So what we're going to do, we're going to just open up a corner of this and insert the tool in here. We're going to get a sample, and we're going to see if there's any gases in here that could be a problem for storage and so far no gases whatsoever on the blueberry so now we're going to try the pecan and no gases in, in the pecan so that's a good thing that tells us that we got enough moisture out of this pie that we made all the fats and oils pretty much inert from going bad and growing bacteria. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And we're gonna go ahead and continue. So we're gonna take out a piece of pecan pie and a piece of blueberry pie. Now, this is the blueberry pie and it's pretty much looking like an average pie I mean, it almost looks good enough to eat right now. And just to let you know, this is actually a gl gluten-free pie crust, but it's as good and as delicious as a regular pie crust. Now, the pecan is something else. If you take a look on the sides of this, you can see because of all the sugar, the sugar has foamed up and crystallized on the pecan pie. And that often happens with foods that have lots of sugar. It's kind of along the same thing as the Skittle. Basically Skittles with all the sugar, when the, when the sugars get soft, they'll crystallize and expand and that's what makes the freeze-dried Skittles so special. Well, it's time to reconstitute these pies and bring them back to life. Now, a couple of challenges we have. We have the sugar uh, filling inside of here, but then we have the pastry which is kind of has some fat on the outside. So it's like we're rehydrating two things at the same time that may rehydrate with different times. 
but I think I may have broke the code on how to re reconstitute pi. So here we go. First of all, before we do anything in the hydration of the pie, we need to take a piece of aluminum foil and put the pies in the center. And what we need to do is bring up the sides like a triangle. And we're going to kind of squinch over each corner of the foil. Because what this is going to do, this is going to help hold the pie's shape while it reconstitutes. So we want to have something like that, three-sided, the same size as the pie. Like so. The next step is we're going to put the pies in some water and we're going to submerge the pies in water for three minutes. The water in the bowl is basically to help keep the water in the pies from running out. So the pies basically have to be submerged for three minutes. At the end of three minutes we're going to pour the excess water out And we're going to put these pies in a cold oven set for 400 degrees. So as the oven warms, the pies are inside the oven. And we're at 400 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and take our pies out. And we're going to check these out. First we have the pecan, then we have the blueberry. Got something. Hot blueberry pie. It's wonderful. Kind of give you an idea. Here's the crust. The crust is still flaky, a little bit soft. Now the pecan. It's wonderful stuff here. This is where you can have your pie and eat it too. So here you have it. Reconstituted pie. Now I've tried this with cherry pie with uh, blueberry pie, with pumpkin pie, with pecan pie, and in each case all those pies were uh, reconstituted fairly well. Now with my oven, and not all ovens are the same, but my oven works best at 400 degrees and that's going from cold to 400 with this in the oven. Don't preheat the oven, but the extra time and the warm temperatures helps reconstitute the pie. So depending on your oven and how, how it's calibrated, you might have to adjust the uh, temperature. Don't adjust the time, adjust the temperature. If it, if at 400 degrees, the pie is still a little bit soft, then go up to 425 or 450. But that's, this is how I did to reconstitute my pie at 400 degrees.
Now, reconstituting the pie is really simple. It's packaging the pie that's going to be interesting. Now, when I first made these pies, I put I packaged two pieces of pie, one, one blueberry, one pecan, in this uh, harvest, harvest right package with an oxygen absorber. So it's been in here for now three weeks. Now, if you take a look at the pie, I could probably put four pieces, maybe a few more if I'm lucky, but it's something that you have, have to take care of because the pie, while it's freeze dried, can become brittle. You can actually drop it on the floor and have it shattered. So storing the pie is gonna be a little bit interesting. Um, I think in a glass jar, pie is not gonna go into the glass jar very well. So we're pretty much stuck, stuck to storage bags. So I'm gonna put this aside and uh, let some time go by and uh, see what happens in the future. But I love my pie. So I hope you find this interesting and perhaps helpful. Um, and try it yourself. Give me some feedback. Once again, thank you for your time. Please subscribe, give me some likes, and go forth and freeze dry the world.